In the spring of 1962, a young neighbor missionary was working late, digging out the lagoon for what would later become part of the Polynesian Cultural Center. It was growing dark, and he looked up to see a girl walking towards him. Thinking that it was his sister bringing him some dinner, he turned around to put down his tools, but when he looked up again, she was gone. My name is Nalani. As a little girl, my mother taught me many important things about life. She taught me how to make useful things out of the lauhala leaf. She taught me how to survive planting and harvesting. More importantly, she taught me my culture through chants and hula. She always said, this is how I would know my identity. My mother also told me that as I would grow into a beautiful young woman, I would catch the attention of many young men. One day, I saw a very handsome young man whom I had never seen before, and this is where my story begins. Not knowing who this young man was, he must have come from a neighboring island. I didn't realize at the time that he would meet my two brothers before me. Unfortunately for him, he was hunting in my brother's territory. They were very upset and told him to leave. While he was on his way, this is where he noticed me. As he grabbed my hand, I was shocked at first, but at the same time, I had this good feeling burning inside of me. I pulled my hand away as I listened to him speak. He told me his name was Kekoa. My heart was racing as I gave him my hand again. This time, I knew I wanted to be with him. I was so excited to introduce him to my parents. As I started to introduce him, they didn't look happy. I tried to be positive and show my parents that I was in love with Keko. My brothers came from behind and pushed Keko down. It started to get out of hand. I had no idea why my brothers were treating him like this. As my father tried to calm the situation, he told me to leave. Kekoa got out of there as soon as he could. 
As I started to cry, Keokoa came and comforted me. He said, let's go far away from here. And so we did. Against the wishes of my parents, we secretly got married. My father found out and then sent my brothers to go and find us. Well, we thought we could hide, but it wasn't meant to be. My brothers had found us. As my brother approached us, I quickly jumped to my feet to try and stop him from hurting Kekoa. He yelled and then pushed me down. Kekoa started to run for his life, and the chase began. the forest, but I knew I had to go in. My heart was beating so fast, hoping that he wasn't hurt. Unfortunately, my brothers had beaten him badly. I asked myself, why? Why did they do this to him? We then fled up the windward coast to a sanctuary settlement located in the town of Laie. because of his injuries. The beating he had received was so severe, he could no longer hold on to life.
after burying my husband, I would constantly visit his grave. I felt anger. Emptiness, I was trying to understand why. Why this? I didn't want to live anymore. I knew I had to go on with life for my baby's sake. When he was born, I became very reclusive. Eventually, I stopped talking with anyone else in the community. My eyes and ears were only for my little boy. One early morning, I awoke to find my little boy missing. I was frantic and searched for him all over the village. He was never found. Life had no meaning anymore. I became more reclusive. My baby is gone. My husband is gone. Anger started to overcome my soul. It seemed as though I was destined for tragedy. That day, I too disappeared. Some believed maybe the spirit of my dead husband had taken me because I was so unhappy. Some say I just wandered off into the forest and was never seen again. Or maybe the spirit of my son had taken me to the other side. Some say that I may have drowned in the ocean. They're all wrong.